Not this week. I already see the jig. I already know the Cowboys about to go out here. They're going to put up a great performance on offense. Well, not a great performance. They'll put up a solid performance on offense as the Chargers defense is abysmal. I watch we somehow lose this game. I'm picking the Chargers this week. <laughs> I'm picking the Chargers. I don't trust the Cowboys. Let's uh let's go. Let's go to the next topic and let's go to the um week six NFL predictions. Um oh wanna, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do something. I want to do something um very interesting. So for each game, let's give the matchup player versus player that we're looking up we're looking um for we're looking forward to so for instance let's say it's a wide receiver versus a corner it's a it's a left tackle versus a pass rusher or something like that each game what two players are you looking forward to like going up against one another so let's go to nfl week six let's start off here we go. Get the schedule going. All right. So let's go to. Uh, uh, all right. You know what? You know what? Depending on the game, we'll give our matchups that we like because the Ravens and Titans, I really don't give a crap about. So, but give me. Mm. Wait, nine thirty. Oh yeah, they're in oh, London. My goodness, they're in London. I think it is. Yeah, give me the Ravens this game. Um, they struggled last week. Uh, I knew it was going to be a close game. I was hesitant. I, I was like, oh, I'll pick the Ravens, but I know the Steelers, they like to play really well. So I wasn't too shocked that they lost because this happens all the time again when it comes to the Ravens and Steelers. But give me the Ravens this game. I think they're going to bounce back. I think the receivers are going to be dropping passes like they were last week. Oh, my gosh. The, the Lamar Jackson discourse this past week was egregious. Man, just I see. Oh, well, I guess I don't pay attention to that side because all I see was people showing, pointing out how his receivers was dropping passes and everything. Well, I haven't seen much negativity for Lamar. Well, it's it's been both sides. So okay, part of the thing that's been sort of talked about is okay, Lamar, like the fumbling issue. The fact that you threw a pretty much a um a jump ball to um Odell, Odell <laughs> at his at, at his age and he route to Odell is crazy. Yeah, because it was gonna be a back shoulder throw, right? And he just I think I, I remember Dan Olowski talked about number one, it wasn't just Lamar's fault, it was the OC's fault because he had him, I think it was in shotgun, and he said in those situations you want him like um under center. Give give the receiver some more time to sort of um you know develop his route because literally immediately snap snap comes around and O Lamar he's throwing that and Odell he hasn't gotten to his route pretty much yet so yeah man um give me the Ravens yeah um, I'm gonna go with the Ravens simply because the Titans might have one of the worst corner rooms in the league. Christian Fulton is cooked food, and I don't even know who the other corner is. They, they're just not good. This secondary is not good outside of Kevin Bayard, really, and it's, it's just whatever. They just have a good D-line, but the D-line is mostly just Jeffrey Simmons. So, yeah, and I don't think Tannehill is going to move the ball much at all, really. It's He's going to have to throw the D-hop and pray at this point. Sure. Just catch the ball. Just catch the ball, Ravens. Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, and Odell. Just catch the ball. Just yes, please. Ball. All right. So let's go down the next game on the docket. It's Commanders and Falcons. Mm. This is going to be in Atlanta. So. Okay. Falcons are undefeated at home, by the way. This is an interesting one. Um, give me the Falcons. Although. Desmond Ritter is arguably the worst quarterback in the league right now. Starting quarterbacks in the league right now. Have you I seen that commander's defense? That's I'm about to get into that. And I think that I think that the tight ends are going to get involved a lot this game. 
well, then again, they are one of the best at defending the tight end. So I, I might be wrong about that. But I, I do think B. John, he'll be fine. I think he'll get it going this game. I think the um, the rushing offense will be good. Um, Desmond Ritter, I don't think he's going to be – he's going to look awful like he did against the Jacksonville Jaguars that one game. Um, I don't think he's going to play like he did last week, but he, he'll make enough plays where they'll win the game. I think the defense, they'll show up. Um, they, they have an underrated defense. The defense is pretty solid for the most part. Um, they have AJ Terrell. He's going to be um, guarding Terry McLaurin. That's a matchup I'm going to be really looking forward to. Um, and I just think Sam Howell. It's something about Sam Howell, man. He's just rubs me the wrong way. Very inconsistent. He has a lot of um, what's um, Brian Fitzpatrick in him, where it's like one game he'll look really good, and then the next two games he looks god awful. So, <laughs> give me the Falcons this game. I'm going the opposite route. Wow. I'm going to say the Commanders snapped the three-game losing streak and beat the Falcons mm. on the road. Mm. Interesting. Why do you think that? And the only reason I say this is because, like you said, Desmond Ritter, he's just not a guy. Point blank, period. And I don't really – See, I I just have a slight. I don't, I just can't explain it, but I have a hunch that the commanders come out with this one. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure. I don't because I don't think they're going to have to beat the commanders through the air, and I just can't. I just can't rely on Desmond Ritter to do that. Hmm. You think you think that D line going to show up? They have to. They have no choice but to. But will they? That's the thing. Cause I think Chase Young will show up. Oh yeah, I think he. I think he's one of the best in the league when it comes to pressures. Yeah, he's. I think he's top five or so, yeah. or top ten at least. But yeah, I I I, th- I think the Commanders get a win here. I don't think we get a big Bijan game either. All right, all right. Well, hopefully we don't get a good a big Bijan game because I'm playing you in ah, fantasy and yeah. I can't afford. To, to lose because Bijan got a Mickey Mouse performance against the Commanders. Nah, we need we need a big Bijan performance. I need I need him to go for like 150, two touchdowns. I need all that. We need all that Bijan. I need you to have your um your coming out party. And I need him to have one of those Christian McCaffrey uh legacy type of games. Some three touchdown, some three touchdown type of games. Like he, he had like two hundred all purpose yards. Please like, no. I need all. I need all that. We need all that. Please no. <laughs> all right, let's go to uh, Seahawks versus Bengals. This is an interesting one. Um, Bengals. So... I don't even have to go too much. Really? Into this one. Really? Yes. I mean Seattle. Yes. They've been playing pretty solid. That that is true, but the Bengals might have. Found their groove back on offense, which is which should have been the plan from the beginning. Throw the ball to Jamar Chase. Hmm. So if they continue that winning formula against a Seattle team whose defense isn't all that great, to be honest, and the trenches aren't that great either. So just throw the ball to Jamar Chase, and you'll probably win. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. You don't think uh, Devin Witherspoon gonna have um the best of a uh... Jamar Chase that game, like DK Metcalf mm. said. Mm. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not okay. yet. See, I, I haven't seen I haven't seen much film with Devin Witherspoon, so I don't know how great he's been playing, but I've heard nothing but good things. He's been pretty good. He's been pretty good. He yeah. he he not on sauce. Gardner level is he? Uh, he makes more plays in the run game like he's more versatile because they they'll like they'll have they'll blitz with a spoon and they'll also he'll he's also more of a willing tackle he's more physical in that aspect so but as far as pure coverage no he's not on sauce Mm. rookie year level okay i have give me seattle i just think seattle's been playing really well uh the way that they looked against the giants defensively I think that their defense is getting better. Uh, the brook, the rookie Devin with the spoon, he's he looks really I good. Mean, it's the Giants. I know, but it's but at the same time, they've they've been looking really good, really competitive. They beat the Lions. 
on the road. Like that's that's really impressive. I just think that the Bengals, I'm still hesitant. I need to see more from them. They beat the Cardinals. Like I get it, the Cardinals, they've, you know, they're they're well coached and everything that the guys they they seem like they're not gonna quit, but overall they're not very talented. I I have to see more before I really am confident to pick the Bengals this game against a team that looks like they're gonna make the playoffs again. Okay. Next game on the docket, Colts versus Jaguars. This is an easy one. No Anthony Richardson. I'm going Jaguars on this one. Um, Going away, by the way. I expect Calvin Ridley to have a big game. <laughs> you know what I'm Please saying? Please no. Oh, man. What did I tell you about Calvin Ridley, bro? Like, I, I try to tell all you guys. He, he's not Washington. I was right. You know, he, he had a big game against – um. I forget the I forget the team that they play. Oh, it was the Bills. He had a big game against the Bills, and you know, you know, I watch all twenty two. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, who who you have winning? I'm gonna go with the Jags too because, like you said, no Anthony Richardson. Minshew is serviceable as a backup, but he's no, he's not a guy for real, and the. The Jaguars' defense is actually pretty stout. So, and they're still giving, they still have Jonathan Taylor on um, snap count. So, he's not really going to get too much work in. And Zach Moss is no, he's no Barry Sanders. So, I'm going to go with the Jaguars. I'm going to go with the Jags here. It's a divisional game, but I'm still, I'm still take the Jags. Yeah. And, uh, Jacksonville is one of the best at stopping the run. So that's really going to be very hard for a team that has oh, a quarterback. Yeah, they're one of the best at stopping okay, the run. Okay, thank you, because I was starting Zach Moss in my other league, so I might oh, have to Oh, no, 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 no. See, yeah, you tripping on them. But um, Jacksonville, they're an interesting team because before the season started, I had my doubts. I thought that, oh, this defense is not going to be good. You know, why are people overrating Jacksonville? The way the the way the AFC is looking right now, maybe people are on to something. Maybe some of these analysts were on to something because that defense has been balling. Uh, it's going to be a matter of time before the offense like really gets it going. And man, if they could just get that offense together, whoo! It's the same thing with the Chiefs, honestly. Where it's like if they get the offense going, they're going to be a handful. They're going to be dangerous. They could be a they can go to the AFC Championship if they get that offense together and the defense keep playing like they are. Because Travis Etienne, he's he's been phenomenal. He's been tremendous. And it's only a matter of time before um, Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley, like, really explode. Because they, they've been – Christian Kirk, he's been solid. But, like, there's it's only a matter of time before, like, they really start getting it going and they start looking like one of the best duos in the league. So, and you have Evan Ingram as well. All right. right. Yeah, so they, they have a lot of talent. Let's go to oh, this is another game that's pretty much Cut like, I don't and I don't really I don't really need to take much time with this one. Dolphins versus Panthers. Give me the Dolphins going away. It's, it's that easy. Dolphins by fifty million points. <laughs> fifty billion. Tyreek uh, Hill, my brother. I need two hundred yards and three touchdowns. No, nah, I need him. I need him pull a, a CD Lamb versus the Giants. I need him to do that. Where it's stop, like, stop. They, y'all gonna be up so big that they he he's just not gonna even put up his he regular get, numbers. He's gonna get all those stats in the first half. I he, need he, three touchdowns. Re, come on, nah, my fantasy nah. is it's not count, we're counting on you. The nah, solo bro. step and turf boys are counting on your performance. Nah, bro, pull pull a CD Lamb. Act like you have no dog in you. Pull a CD Lamb. Oh, be quiet! You, cause you want see, you need CD to go off Monday. <laughs> I, I act like you don't have no dog in you, in you, and you just you know you just be chilling the entire game. Look, look, you look how know. he's talking about his own player that he drafted. This I should have nasty. I should have drafted AJ Brown. I was tripping. Those those damn fantasy experts had CD ranked over AJ Brown. I blame you for that because you guys had a you guys had Amin Ra over AJ Brown as well. Like, I, oh my God, I'm so mad about that. Oh, <laughs> why, why, man? I, I hope... at least you didn't draft Bradley Chubb in the first round. And he tore his freaking MCU. Oh, you mean um, said Bradley Chubb? 
You mean uh, I mean Nick Chubb. Nick, Nick Chubb. Chubb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I did that in my in the other league, and my season is pretty much cooked. So. I want I wanted Nick Chubb, and I was I was if I would have drafted Nick Chubb, I would have drafted him like second round because um only thing with Nick Chubb is that he's he's um he's not a guy that you can he'll catch passes or receptions. So that was one of the things I was like really thinking about, where it's like he'll give you one hundred yards rushing. But then sometimes he won't even give you a touchdown, and you'll just get like ten fantasy points. So that's one of the downsides <laughs> of having Nick Chubb. And uh, but yeah, give me the Dolphins in this game. I expect them to go away. Tua versus uh, Tua versus Bryce Young, two Alabama boys. You know what I'm saying? Uh it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But uh, unfortunately, um, only one of the Alabama boys is gonna come come up victorious and looking good in that. Uh, let's go to the Vikings versus the Bears. Give me the Vikings Bears with no Justin Jefferson. Ooh, give me the Bears. And the Vikings defense is like warm butter. You can just go right through it. Um, the Bears have been playing. They played well, one Justin good game. Fields has and been that, playing. And DJ better. Moore and DJ Moore. I might be crazy. I'm gonna go with the Bears too. I mean, I probably I the shouldn't. Bears too, I picked the Bears. I probably too. shouldn't, but I'm, I'm gonna go with the Bears. It's it's funny yeah. with the Bears because you can see go that the they're trying hand. to tank. You, they, you can see like equal equal of St. Brown just went on IR. Khalil Herbert went on IR. You know, other guys in the secondary they're hurt. Like it's just it's just a bunch of banged up players on the Bears. But then again, you have Justin Fields and DJ Moore, and so I I don't know, man. It's this is a, a coin flip for me, but if I have to guess, I, I would probably go with the Bears because the the coaching staff on the Bears, like, they know that if they don't win games, they're out of there. Like, there is no, oh, we'll give them another year. Justin Fields, oh, we'll give you another year. Like, no, y'all are gone if you don't win any games. And with the Vikings, on the other hand, there is some margin for error, like, the coach, the coach for the Vikings, they'll probably give him another year because his first year he made the playoffs, and the fact that their offense and defense is not what it once was last year. So yeah, give me the Bears. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next game. Um, 49ers versus Browns. Give me the 49ers running away. Yeah, the 49ers, man. They Deshaun Watson, unbelievable. I, I, he's dealing with injury though. I, I'll say this: um, his shoulder is really messed up. They diagnosed him. They said he was he was healthy, and then all of a sudden now he's not healthy. Could he have possibly quit? I don't know. I don't know. It's not like he can't afford not to. Should they give him guaranteed money? Mm-hmm. But yeah, forty nine ers man, they're they're. I, I hate them so much for what they did in my Cowboys, but I hate the Cowboys even more for giving that type of performance. Freaking 40. I can't wait till they lose in the playoffs again. Who 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 you want to win? Who you want to um who would you rather have going to the Super Bowl? The 49ers or the Eagles? <laughs> Can like a <laughs> meteor hit the field before the game kicks off so it gets canceled? Oh my God. Because I don't want to see neither of them teams in the Super Bowl. But if I had to pick gun to my head, I had to pick. I'm a root. I'd have to. I'd rather see the 49ers in the Super Bowl. I can't stand to see the Eagles win anything of importance. <laughs> That's the biggest op. Yeah, I can't. Them fans are just, my God. 49ers fans, been they've been pretty okay after beating us down like that. The Eagles fans been talking more trash than the 49ers fans. They ain't even play us. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I, I'd rather see the 49ers go to the Super Bowl than the freaking Eagles. All right, well. Hopefully. Yeah. I hope we get a freaking Lions and 49ers game. That's what I want to see. Lions and 49ers game. I mean, that would be, that'd be pretty interesting. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that at all, actually. Um, but I don't know, man. Both 49ers are going to win this game running away, uh, even though the Browns defense is one of the best 
They're playing PJ Walker. He's starting at quarterback. So God bless the Browns. I feel bad for that fan base because they they've been subjected to some of the worst QB play of all time. And the fact that the guy you gave all that money to, you traded for, is hurt and hasn't played up to what you expected. I know that has to be heartbreaking. Like seriously, like that that has to be the worst feeling in the world. The fact that you finally thought that you found a QB that you've been missing this entire time. Like he was a top five QB, and then all of a sudden he's just wetting the bed on national television. It's it's a curse. The the franchise is cursed. And so and 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 Baker Mayfield is playing better football than Deshaun Watson right now. It's just it's, it's karma. I don't know. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's crazy. All right, so let's go to another game. This one is actually kind of interesting, um, mainly because of CJ's drop. But those these two teams, um, the Saints versus the Texans. Uh, I'm gonna go with the, the hmm, I'm gonna go with the Saints in a nail biting game. Um, the Texans did lose to the Falcons. And I think that I think that the Saints are a little bit better than the Falcons. So because of that logic, I'm gonna go with the Saints. Although the Texans <laughs> will be at home, I do think the Saints, the trenches, I love the trenches. The Saints have the better trenches, and I think they have enough dudes where they can move the ball and they have Kamara back. So give me the Saints. Yeah, I'm going with the Saints here, too. The Saints defense is pretty freaking good, as you see what they did to Jordan Love with that Monday. But, yeah, uh, yeah, give me the Saints. Even on a short week, they're still better than the Texans, in my opinion. C.J. Stroud, I want to say he struggled last week. More like his receivers just wasn't weren't open. A.J. Terrell did a good job slowing down guys like Nico Collins, who was tearing it up this all them other weeks. And he has to go against another top corner in Marshawn Lattimore. So, and the D lineman on the D line for the Saints ain't no slouch either. So, I'm, I'm going to go with the Saints here. They're only favored by two points. I think they cover that, though. Mm-hmm. I think they cover that easily. The okay. offense is the is where I'm I'm concerned for the Saints because it just hasn't been what it's supposed to be. Chris Olave is supposed to make that borderline top 10 wide receiver jump, but he hasn't been given the opportunity to do so. Derek Carr. Check down Merchant to the fullest. Mm. Sad days. It's a really sad day. Um, Yeah, man, I I just think think that the the Saints, they're just too talented. Uh, The thing with the Falcons is that they're just – what they did to Calvin Ridley, what they did to Nico Collins, having that um, safety over the top. So pretty much you'll have A.J. Terrell guarding the best corner, and then they'll have a safety over the top. So you're pretty much – it's almost like you're double-teaming the receiver, so they can't really go anywhere. And with the Saints, um, I don't know if they particularly do that. I feel like they play more man coverage with Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, but Marshawn Lattimore, again, he's one of the best in the business. So I do think Nico Collins is going to have a better game, though, because, number one, they're not going to have a safety over the top. He's 6'4". Um, I know I know Marshawn Lattimore, him and Mike Evans, he usually gets the best of Mike Evans, and Mike Evans is like the same size and everything like that. But I do think he'll have a better day overall. I don't know if he'll have um, what he did in, um, I think it was week three, where he he just torched the Steelers. I don't know if he'll have that game, but I, I do think he'll have a little bit better showing than the game from last week because I think the schemes are a little different. But, yeah, give me the Saints. All right, so let's go to the next game, Patriots versus Raiders. We will not be watching this game. Like, I'm not going to be watching no minute of it. If it's on red zone, that's the only time I'll ever see it because this game is a shit show. This is a wash of a game like this shouldn't even be shown on cbs at all this should be a blackout game like nobody should be 
allowed to watch this game. Patriots versus Raiders. Um, give me the Raiders this game because the Patriots absolutely stink on offense. There's nothing about them that's good. Nothing. Like the run game is not good. The passing offense is not good. The quarterback play is not good. The coaching is not good. Bill O'Brien, God bless you. But at the end of the day, if your quarterback stinks, if your receivers can't get open, it doesn't matter what play calls you run. It's not going to work. And so give me, give me, and then and then on the defensive side, the missing guys, get give, give me the Raiders. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Raiders too, just simply because they can at least put points on the board. The Patriots cannot. They have, I believe they have one of the worst rates of going three and out in the league. Like they don't convert first downs like 70% of the time. That is terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, that is terrible. And it's just a testament to the lack of the Patriots. Like, it's re Mac Jones is terrible. He's he's legit horrible. And I know people that wait till he gets his offense. He still stinks. He stinks. Yeah. The run that... game is non-existent. The passing game is – I don't even know what to describe as pass. It's terrible. Who are these dudes out there playing receiver? You're relying on Kendrick Bourne to be your number one guy. Juju Smith-Schuster and freaking – is Tyquan Thornton even on the field? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, dude, is does he even play? Seriously. It's ridiculous. It, it, that's, they need to blow it up or something. And then on the defensive end, they lost Gonzo for the year. Mm -hmm. And Judon is still out, I believe. So I'm not picking the Patriots to win anything. Mm -mm. This is a lost season for them. One and four. Good luck in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. Ooh. Or Drake May. Shoot, either or is a, is a slam dunk. But at the end of the day, like you, you need to have good coaching and good personnel because it does. As bro, we saw it with Trevor Lawrence, generational talent. That if you don't have the right coaching and personnel, it doesn't matter how much talent you have, you're still not gonna succeed. So, anywho, that's a different discussion. Let's go, let's go to the next game. Uh, Lions and Buccaneers. This could be interesting, but I'm gonna go with the Lions on this one. I just think top to bottom, roster wise, trenches, they have it all. They're gonna win this game going away. Is Amon Raw playing? No. Um I, think I don't think he is. I think he may be questionable. I don't think he played last game. I don't think he practiced Thursday. If so he didn't usually, practice usually, Thursday, if yeah. you don't practice Thursday, you're probably not going to play. I don't. I don't think Jim. I don't know. If Jameer, Jameer Gibbs is in playing. He's in playing. I, I still think they're going to win though. I think they're well coached. That is true. That is, and Jared Goff isn't a bum. No, he's he's tier three, but he's high. But if you look at tier three QB, he's like a high tier three. Like he's teetering. Like he's it's like if he just does a little bit more, he might he might reach that tier two status, but it's just like he's not there yet. But he's still you can win a Super Bowl with Jericho. Oh, uh, I'm gonna say Lions too, because the coaching, they still have a good offense, even without guys like Amon Ra and um, Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs wasn't really doing too much anyway because they want Montgomery to be the lead back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the D Aiden Hutchinson is really coming along as like one of the top guys at edge in the league. Man has four interceptions as an edge rusher. What kind of crap is that? Uh, <laughs> Reminds me of Jabril Peppers. Not Jabril Peppers. Um, Julius Peppers. Julius Peppers. Julius yeah, he Peppers. reminds me of Julius Peppers, and like, cause Julius Peppers used to do some of that. Yeah. So yeah, Aiden Hutchinson's a monster out there. Yeah, I, I'll say the Lions win in a, in a close one. It's going to be a close one, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty stout uh, on defense, especially. I think they have a solid run defense. Yeah, they're they're actually really good in the run. Yeah. So yeah, and Baker has been playing well. Mm -hmm. And I did, I don't know if Mike Evans is playing. I, th I think he, he is, is. He is. So, yeah, they got some little firepower. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to still go with the Lions doing a close one. Lions, I think Lions win by 10. I say four. Four? Why four? 
I don't know. That's just that's just the I'm trying to get some score gum. I okay. don't know. All right, all right. You're just trying to be different. Okay, let's let's go to the next game. Let's go to the Cardinals versus Rams. Give me the give me the Rams. Yeah, I'm gonna go Rams too. They just have firepower on offense. And Co- the cool. they, yeah, and Coach McVay is a genius offensively. So mm-hmm. yeah. Even though Matt Stafford played horrible against the Eagles last week. He did. Did not foresee that coming. I, I do think he 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 bounces back against the Cardinals. So. Trenches trenches is important, and I, I knew that was going to play a factor, and it did. So they couldn't eat. They they stopped the run as well. Uh, but I I do think this week they'll they'll play a lot better. Puka, uh, Cup, Tyler Higby, um, Kerryon Williams. Though those guys are they'll bounce back. Uh, Matthew Stafford is going to bounce back against a the the division opponent that. Yes, they've been they're they're well coached. Yes, they've been playing, they've been overachieving, but overall they don't have enough talent to stop this Rams offense. And <laughs> I'm so glad I picked up Matthew Stafford at um a certain person in our uh, fantasy little, <laughs> you know, a little league, whatever. He was he was so mad that I picked up Matthew Stafford. <laughs> It was so funny because not because he had to trade he had to trade for a QB and stuff. I was just laughing. Dude. That was that was a good one. I I I didn't know he was looking for a QB, but it, it is what it is. And you know you you have to play you have to plan ahead. See in fantasy you have to plan ahead because you never you never know because by weeks and injuries you never know when you're going to have to put out guys that were on the bench because one of your best players. Um, it's going to sit out a game. It's going to be a bye week. So that's why that's why I haven't made no trades yet because I know that as of right now, I need to have depth. I need to have guys on my bench that I can rely on. And until the bye weeks are over, I can't really make a trade. So see, like I was, man, I don't want to, I don't want to teeter too much, but like I was, I was thinking about trying to propose a trade for Tyreek Hill. But I was like, oh. I was a trading you, Tyree Kill. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. It I just gotta, wasn't I happening. Got, I got a trade package for you. I, I would have had a trade package for you, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you now. But I, I would have had a trade package for you. It would have been very enticing. I'm telling you. You probably would have put CD, Nico, or somebody else in it. Fuck no. That's way too much. CD and Nico. Hell no. Harvey Kill is like a good 30 a game when he plays no. normal. Hell no. That's crazy. That is too much. For Tyreek Hill is, is number one receiver in fantasy, but like for Tyreek Hill, it should be like for you, it should be like a running back and like a receiver. Has to be like a high end like running back and like a solid and a high end like receiver. Not not I wouldn't say like C. Well, yeah, something something around. Like the rankings of CD, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not about to tell you. I'm not about to tell you. Anywho, uh, let's go to the next game on the docket. Uh, Eagles versus Jets. Give me the Eagles. Yeah, I'm going Eagles too. I'm not picking against these clowns anymore. It's a lot of it's a lot of one sided matchups. Yeah, so we may get the funniest week in NFL history. You know, it's one of those weekends where. If you bet, I think I think it may be a good week to bet for the simple fact that, well, depending on the odds, depending on the odds. But, like, a lot of the games are very one-sided. So if you want to do, like, a, a seven, you want to pick seven games, whatever, have, like, a little parlay, pick seven of those games, because a lot of these games are, like, very one-sided. So, yeah, give me the Eagles. I just think the Jets are not the Zach Wilson. More. Yeah, they don't have the offensive firepower to keep up with the uh, Eagles, even without Jalen Carter playing and uh, Darius Slay. I can't trust Zach Wilson to do much of anything offensively. Let's go Giants. I heard, I heard yeah, they're up? letting um, – was that last week they said they was letting Brees Hall off the leash? Yeah, that was last week. That was last week? Okay. Yeah. Even still, the Eagles are good against the run, so. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things. That's why – I'm hesitant to start Brees Hall in fantasy because I'm like, oh man, 
I know they they're gonna be without Jalen Carter and Darius Slay, but they still got some dogs on that D line, and it's gonna be very tough. It's gonna be very tough. So yeah, give me the Eagles in this game. All right, let's go to uh, the Bills versus Giants. It's another one, pretty simple. Give this me the Bills. The absolute going away. worst week to play you because don't you have Josh Allen? Yo, oh my goodness, and James Cook. You know, you know the Giants is one of the worst when it comes to um stopping the run. <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. This is the worst schedule ever. Who made this? But obviously, I'm picking the Bills. They're favored by 15 points, which is crazy. Nah, that is crazy. Wow. Yeah, I'm. I'm going. The Bills are going to slaughter the Giants. I don't see them competing at all. I need a five touchdown day. Josh Allen, I need a no, legacy no, you don't. performance. Stop. I'm talking 350 and five total touchdowns. I don't You're care crazy. if you want to throw it. I don't care if you want to rush it. Either or is fine with me because, man, against the Giants, you at home? No Daniel Jones? That means you're going to get the football at least at the Daniel Jones not time. playing? No, he's not playing. Oh, God. And, and they're and they missing Andrew Thomas. And they misses some of the guy. Oh my God, man! You are gonna get the football is like? At too, the... Who got Bills defense? Is it too late to pick him? Pick them? No, nah, nah, they don't. Yeah, the Bills defense is not gonna be on waivers. Trust. I was trying to get the Chiefs defense, and somebody picked them up on Wednesday. I was so mad. I was like, no. It's like they're playing the Broncos. No, I had the Chiefs defense uh against the Jets, and they let me down. So I picked the Lions, and then it was look. Man, whatever. I don't want to. I don't want to teeter too much away from the conversation. But anywho, yeah, the Bills they're gonna go. They're gonna go away with this. Josh Allen, he's gonna have a party. Stephon Diggs is gonna have a party. Um, James Cook, hopefully he has he has a bounce back day. Gets me like twenty fancy points. You know, all purpose. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, the Bills they got this in the bag. It's not looking good, fool. It's not looking good. Yep, and the Giants they will go one in five. Oof. Ugh. It's just looking real. Take right. time. Oh my God. That's another th- it's so many like organizations that overvalue their quarterbacks. They just Daniel Jones, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson. Just it's funny because uh for the people at home, one of our Dak Prescott members in the group, he's a Giants fan. He was trying to convince us, he was trying to convince us not to pay Daniel Jones, and he was getting jumped. In a group chat because people like he won a playoff game. You gotta pay him and blah blah blah. Now look at him. See, see that the funny thing is is that a lot of them were just trolling. I could, I know, I know when they're trolling because they just love to see the Giants fail. See me, I'm I'm trolling. Like I'm like, yo, he's Danny Dimes. He did this and that. Like I know he's sorry. I know he's not that dude, but I just want them to pay him because I don't like the Giants. So they're yeah, they're stuck. They're really stuck in. Yeah, it's it's getting real sticky up in there. All right, let's go to the final game. Cowboys versus Chargers. Monday night football. Um Kellen Moore revenge game. Man, it, it's gonna be interesting. You got Justin Herbert. You have uh yeah, the Cowboys with Dak versus the Chargers. Give me the Cowboys, though. I think they're going to bounce back. The Chargers' defense is terrible. Um, they're going to be in L.A., but we already know when it comes to the Cowboys, that's a home field advantage for the Cowboys in L.A. So That's true. That's true. Hmm. I know what I said earlier in the season, that I'm going to pick my Cowboys every game. Until we lose, we've lost two games now, but but the philosophy says we could beat anybody until they prove they can beat us. Not this week. I already see the jig. I already know the Cowboys about to go out here. They're gonna put up a great performance on offense. Well, not a great performance. They'll put up a solid performance on offense because the Chargers' defense is abysmal. I watch we somehow lose this game. I'm picking the Chargers this week. <laughs> I'm picking a charge. I don't trust the Cowboys on Monday. I really don't. I'm not going and expecting any wins or nothing. If we win, hey, I'll take it. But I'm not expecting them to to win this week. I'm really not. 
this is the perfect script set up for a Kellen Moore revenge game, especially after the offense looked abysmal last week. This is the perfect script for a Kellen Moore revenge game. So all the media people could be like, the Cowboys should have kept Kellen Moore. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Now they're three and three. And the, you know, I, say, I already see it coming. They I already see it. Listen, Chargers will win this game. You're wrong. Uh, I know the script of the game. Oh, really? Um, yeah, the Cowboys are going to win by 10. It'll probably be 30 to 20. I think that the Chargers. You think this some... defense is capable of holding Justin Herbert 20 points? Yep. I've seen them do it before where you guys went to the, to Los Angeles and pretty much made the Chargers offense look pedestrian. I think they're going to do it again. I think that for the most part, for the majority of the game, the Chargers offense is going to be held at bay. Austin Eckler, he's not going to be able to do much. I think that they're going to get points in garbage time, which is going to make the, you know, the points disparity between the both teams look not as bad as it was. So I, I think 30 to 10, 30 to 10, 30 to 20. I think that's going to be the final score. I think that the running game with Tony Pollard is going to get it together. I think that's CD I Lamb. I hope so. I think CD Lamb is going to have a, a great game. I think Dak, he's going to manage the game really well. And I expect this offense to look really good. I expect Michael Parsons to have two sacks this game. I expect uh, everybody to get it together. I feel, I'm telling you, bro, like, this is – you should be confident this game. Like, this isn't going to be a game where they're going to wet the bed. I, I know I know you've, you're you trying to reverse jinx it, but I'm telling I you. Swear you I swear to you I'm not. You don't, you don't have to do all that. Like, you can you can sit down and you can you can feel comfortable about this game. You can – Right. So go go ahead and make you go ahead and like I don't know make you make you a sandwich or something. Um, sit on the couch, get get you a little pillow, or whatever, and just chill because I'm telling you, it's gonna be one of them games when you don't have to worry about anything because it's gonna be from start to finish. The Cowboys are gonna show up and they're gonna do the thing, and it's gonna be thirty to twenty. I'm telling you, I'm telling you this right now. We'll see, man. I I I I lost faith in these 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 people, man. All right, all right. That game broke my spirit. I, I usually I keep up with the team and see what the content creators and stuff saying. I haven't watched no content creators. I ain't checked no Twitter pages for the. I've just been doing. I've just been doing anything else. <laughs> all right. Well. All right. I, I I understand after what's transpired with the Cowboys recently. I can I can understand why you would um, be pessimistic. But I'm I'm telling you, man, they they'll be fine. This is a game. They don't have to show. Okay, all right. Well, 